Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about one, what is the best RAID and two, what is the best RAID for you? Because if you've purchased a NAS device for the very first time or you're thinking about buying one in the near future, one of the earliest decisions you are going to make during the setup of your NAS device is choosing a RAID level. Now a RAID means redundant array of independent disks or if you're a lot older, redundant array of inexpensive disks. This is because when RAID first came about, it was because drives themselves were incredibly expensive but very small in capacity and in order to take advantage of capacity limits what you would get with a RAID is drives being all pushed together into one giant RAID on a software level making them visible as a single drive. It used to be for performance so multiple drives could be read and written from at the same time and then it moved more away from that and then into the realms of security that is to say redundancy. Now redundancy when it comes to the redundant part of redundant array of in independent disks refers to the fact that with a RAID the idea is is that if one of the drives in that RAID fails, your data should still be recoverable. What you don't want is a system whereby you've got four to five, six, whatever number of hard drives all combined together filled with data, and if one of those drives breaks, you lose all the data. It's just too risky. And redundancy is the idea that you've got a safety net. You have an area of fail. Basically, you have one degree of failure that means, or two, depending on the rate you go for, that allow you to have at least one disk of failure and not lose your data. There are loads of other variables to RAID, but without further ado, let's go into the core and most popular forms of RAID, their advantages and their disadvantages. Straight away, before we even get to RAID, let's talk about JBOD. J-B-O-D. Just a bunch of disks. And it is what it says on the tin. It's a bunch of disks that are visible as individual drives. If you have a bunch of 10 terabyte drives, four 10 terabyte drives in a JBOD, you will see four 10 terabyte drives disks. You can maybe use them to back up to one another and synchronize, but for the most part, that is not RAID. That is just independent storage visible via a single user interface. Next, we can talk about another oldie but a goodie, RAID 0. Straight away, RAID 0 gives you the very best performance, if done right, than any other RAID volume. It takes all of the available disks, let's use our four 10TB drives, and compresses them into one single 40 terabyte visible area of storage. The advantage is great read and write speeds and enormous volume uh, storage space to work with. Disadvantage is no redundancy whatsoever. You lose one disk, you lose the lot. And it's worth highlighting at this juncture that any PC or NAS system, the two most fragile parts of the array are the power supply, which is always on, which you can replace quite easily, and your storage media, which is significantly less easier to replace, and particularly if you've lost your data. So a RAID 0 combines all the disks, gives you loads of speed, loads of storage, but sod all fail safe. So do remember that. And if you are going to consider a RAID 0, make sure you've got a backup in place too. Next, we can talk about RAID 1. Traditionally known as a two disk uh, array, RAID 1 has two disks that are read and written to simultaneously at all times. Most people get it um, kind of mixed up with the idea of synchronization where all the read and write happens on one disk and that disk is copying to the other. That's not how RAID 1 works. In RAID, run, RAID 1, read and write operations are identical and committed to both disks simultaneously. The result is that you've always got two identical copies of your data on either disk, which is great. And also, so you've got one disk of redundancy, the read-write operations, the speed of transmission is pretty good too because you're reading and writing from two disks, effectively giving you up to twice the read and write speed of a single hard drive. But of course, the biggest disadvantage, you lose 50% of the capacity. So if you've got two 10 terabyte disks, you can only see 10 terabytes of storage. Not two times 10, but one because it's one lot of 10 terabyte data visible from two disks. So do bear that in mind. It is pretty much the first uh, RAID level you will go into, particularly if you're a two bay user, but you will find its limitations a few years down the line, and a number of you tend to go for a four, 
six or eight bay NAS device and then put two discs in a RAID 1 and then over time graduate to another RAID level, which brings us to probably the most popular and well-known RAID configuration of all, RAID 5. Now, a RAID 5 configuration is a little bit harder to explain. A RAID 5 configuration gives you most of the benefits of the others. For example, if you have those four disks once again, all 10 terabytes in storage, in a RAID 5, what it'll do is it will take all four disks and line them up, and every time you write data to your NAS, it will do a wave of data, and it will write on the first disk, the second disk, the third disk, and on the fourth disk, it won't write the data that it's done on the others, it will put a tiny little bit of data known as parity. This is a blueprint of the data that's been written on the other three disks. It will, so data, 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 parity. On the next wave of data, it goes data, data, parity, data. So the parity is now switched each disk. And with every wave of data, and I mean every instruction, every wave of data comprises of tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of instructions, every single wave, the parity moves disk. And what you end up with is a system where if you lose one disk, if one disk breaks, then the system can rebuild the data using the data on the remaining three disks and the parity that's located on the others. And that's how RAID 5 works. It gives you the ability to, um, to withstand one drive of loss. What are the advantages? Well, compared with RAID 1, you should get a lot of storage because RAID 5, you can start with three disks so you can do a raid 5 on 10 hard drives if you want you'll only ever lose and by lose you'll only drop one drive of capacity so it's probably the best out there in terms of redundancy versus capacity one disadvantage the read and write performance isn't as good as raid 0 or raid 1 because the parity being created does take a little bit of work from the cpu more powerful NASes will overcome this but for the most part that parity data will make an impact on the cpu and memory performance Ergo, the read and write isn't quite as good as RAID 1 or RAID 0. But still, the most popular RAID configuration out there, with the added bonus, it's probably the best value versus capacity out there, definitely compared with RAID 1, where you can get a 4-bay NAS filled with 4 5TB drives, or a 2-bay NAS with 2 10TB drives, and you'll still have more capacity and a better price per terabyte on the 4-bay than you will on the 2. So... What's next? From there, you can go to a RAID 6, which is near enough identical to a RAID 5, but with two disks of parity. What that means in real terms, and redundancy, what that means in real terms is every wave, it will go data, data, parity, parity, and that's on four disks. So for, it doesn't matter whether you use four, five, six, 10, 20 hard drives in a RAID 6, two disks, every instruction will have parity instead of data. And once again, it can let you withstand two disks of drive failure, which is pretty useful overall for you business users. But of course, with that with that um, parity and the redundant protection, unfortunately, it means your read and write speeds will even be a slightly bit less than RAID 5. That's right. So it goes RAID 0 and RAID 1, RAID 5, and then RAID 6 there. So that, that performance dip may be something that only more powerful NASs will be able to overcome and not be noticed. Finally, we can talk about the last of our well-known RAID configurations, known as RAID 10. Now, RAID 10 takes the logic of RAID 0 and RAID 1 and combines them together for this RAID configuration. It requires at least four disks, and they have to be paired. What that means in real terms, and let's use our four 10TB drives again, is you end up with two disks and two disks here, all of them 10 terabytes. Now, these top two will end up syncing with one another, just like in a RAID 1, with data being read and written to them. Same goes for the other two disks. So what you end up with is two pairs of disks. The read-write is fantastic, with the added bonus that you have got at least two disks of capacity. But, although the performance is greater than that of RAID 6, it's worth highlighting that it's not foolproof, because technically you can withstand the loss of two disks. So if you've got these disks um, synchronized, the top two and the bottom two synchronized together, but these two disks fail and they die, you're fine because all your data's fine. What about if these two disks fail? 
then you've got no chance because the paired discs cannot afford to fail. Only the ones that are opposite one another on the y-axis. What that means in real terms is a RAID 10 gives you a two drive failure such as RAID 6 protection but with an enormous performance boost as it's nowhere near as complex as RAID 5 or RAID 6 but it's worth highlighting it's not foolproof so do bear that in mind because there is always that possibility particularly with bad hard drive patches that you might end up losing the two paired discs. Now the last the two RAID configurations I want to talk about are the ones that are slightly lesser known. One is a fluid RAID system that goes by two names across two different brands. Namely, I'm talking about SHR and Beyond RAID. SHR from Synology for Synology Hybrid RAID and Beyond RAID from Drobo. These are fluid RAID systems. And what that means in real terms is the RAID configuration doesn't require all the disks to be the same. Up to this point, all the RAID configurations we've talked about necessitate you to make sure that every disk in that array is identical by brand, capacity, and speed. If they're not, it will take the disk that is the lowest capacity, the lowest speed, or whatever, and by speed I mean caching and stuff like that, not physical speed, and it will limit all the drives in the RAID array to that. SHR and Beyond RAID do not have that. They let you mix and match drives and brands and capacities as much as you want, and it will give you the best possible outcome. So say you have got four two terabyte drives so you've got four two terabytes in a raid five array so that would mean you lose one disk of capacity so you've got six terabytes overall you have this configuration for three to five years then later on you notice your space is starting to fill up so what do you do you think oh, i'll buy some bigger hard drives now in normal raid configurations you can't introduce bigger hard drives because even if you introduced a 10 terabyte drive all the system would just go no i can only see a two but in SHR, it will recognize the bigger capacities. So you can introduce a 10 TB drive and the rest of the configuration will adapt accordingly. But once you put that first drive in, it will look at that first drive. And although it will see 10, it will still need to make sure there's at least one of the biggest disk available in redundancy. So it will still give you, you won't get the benefits of a 10 TB drive, but you can slowly introduce more 10 terabytes and an SHR or Beyond RAID will adapt accordingly and therefore give you the greater capacity with a fluid RAID system that traditional RAID will not give you. And that's a little complex. There should be an as compare article in the description that details this with diagrams. Finally, the last one to talk about is probably the rarest of all in commercial RAS and uh, in commercial NAS, and that's RAID Z. RAID Z1, 2, and 3. And these are ZFS based RAID configurations. They have certain advantages of all the RAID configurations so far, with the added benefit they have a three disc redundancy available option. Now, you can do an SHR with three disc, you can even do it with a two disc, but uh, Z RAID is probably the most stable and secure RAID configuration out there, but it requires very, very powerful NASes and at least 8 gig of memory just to run that configuration. And ZFS is only really available on enterprise rack mount NASes. You won't really see it, but it's just worth, if you can get hold of it, do use it. But this has been how RAIDs work, and more importantly, which RAID is best for you. Do always remember about capacity about speed and of course about price these three factors are we're going to make all the difference to you and if you are looking at four bays and above you've pretty much got your pick of all of them so if you don't know which way to go for go into the description read the article or use my free advice section on the right hand side and i'll get back to you with my advice completely gratis and for free just use it okay click like if you enjoyed it put a comment below if you've got any questions and click subscribe if you want to learn more about nas i'll see you guys next time